Welcome to Hell. A senior producer here at GB News, Lucy Jones, who works on the brilliant program Dan Wooten Tonight, sent the following tweet today, which has understandably gone viral because it's touched a nerve. Take a look at this. It reads as follows. My university friends today messaged me saying they didn't want to invite me to group meetups because of my views on COVID and the company I work for. Let me just repeat that for you. Her university friends messaged her saying they didn't want to invite her to meetups because of her views on COVID and the company she works for. She goes on to say, I really have learned who my real friends are over the last two years. Welcome to the age of intolerance. Terribly sad though it is, and deeply unfair and cruel, friends freezing each other out for having the wrong views is not a rare occurrence. Whether it's Brexit or COVID, trans rights or net zero, people are willing to discard years of friendship because they've decided you don't have the right opinions. It's very sad because in many cases, these friendships go back years or even decades. School friends, university pals, colleagues, drinking buddies, the guys you play cricket with on a Sunday morning, the girls in your football team or book club. Think how many shared experiences you'll have had with the people who are now shutting you out. Think of all the parties, that quick drink in the pub that became a whole afternoon or evening. Think of the late night phone calls, the secrets and innermost thoughts shared. Think of the millions of WhatsApp messages, the selfies, the presents, the letters, the notes, the cards. Think of the tears, the laughter and the memories. All of that goes because, I don't know, you thought this country should leave a political block based in Brussels. All of that goes because you thought maybe lockdowns have caused more harm than good. All of that goes because you're not sure how people are going to be able to pay for net zero. Or because perhaps you believe that you can identify however you like, but there are just two biological sexes. All of that goes for that. Now, you might find that you're wrong on all of those issues and that your friends were right. Who knows? But when did any of these things become so controversial they were worth the scrapping of years of friendship, of loyalty, time and commitment. It's sad because we give a large portion of our lives and a chunk of our souls to the friends around us. We invest in them only for the funds to now be summarily withdrawn over nothing in this new age of intolerance. For them to so readily discard all of that in the name of closed-minded dogma which is what it is, is a sign of the times. It's where we are in 2022. Of course, I've had loads of it over the last couple of years, and I wouldn't change a thing. If questioning the extraordinary, unprecedented measures that we've seen over the last two years is controversial, unacceptable or problematic, if it's problematic to challenge and ask questions, then I can't help you. You may find what's ultimately problematic is you. Since the beginning of time as a species, we have argued, debated, and through a hard-won common ground, forged a way ahead. Humanity and its unprecedented success has been as a result of the competition of ideas. And that's what happened in schools and universities before many became centers of brainwashing and divisive ideology. And by the way, that's just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. I won't cancel you. And we know about the scale of cancel culture in which perhaps our greatest living author, J.K. Rowling, is being gradually erased for pointing out that there are just two biological sexes backed up by any encyclopedia or medical textbook you might seek to reference. And people are now cancelling each other, as in the case of Lucy Jones. Friendship groups are ethnically cleansing non-believers, whether it comes to COVID, Brexit, veganism, the environment, trans rights, you name it. And so many who seek this cancellation claim to be liberal. They're just nice, caring people. And anyone that disagrees with them is beastly and evil. Well, I'm afraid not. 
When it comes to lockdowns, for example, my main objection has been the catastrophic human damage, the suffering that we've seen. To watch once successful businesses shut down, to watch people losing their jobs, to watch kids locked out of school for months on end and not being able to have a kickabout in the park with their mates, to watch people not receiving medical treatment for diseases like cancer because if it's not COVID, they don't care, to watch that and not say anything, to not ask whether this is justified or wise or will even work, that makes you a bad person? That shows a lack of empathy, really? If you've backed all the measures, and like many in the media and politics have asked for more, you may find the absence of empathy is yours, not mine. You could call these people the bad people. Of course, I wouldn't, because it's all about opinions. And no one's got a monopoly on the facts, on the science, on empathy, and no one has got a monopoly on the truth. Which is why we've got to listen to each other more, not less. Expose ourselves to the discomfort of other views. Social media has created these echo chambers in which people are insulated from discussion, debate and enlightenment. If you're a lefty, you should fill your life up with right wing people. It will be good for you. And if you're right wing, you should do just that with those on the political left which is how it used to be back in the day. People would vote in general elections. Remember that? Labour, Tory, Lib Dem, Green. The result would happen and hey-ho, your side won or they didn't win. And that was the end of it. Whereas now the result of a public vote is just the beginning of years of turf warfare. Exhibit A, Brexit, where an attritional and damaging campaign to reverse the result began the moment it came through. I think the growing popularity of social media twinned with Brexit was a turning point. It set the template for the new age of intolerance. So if you've been dropped by friends for your views on anything, then they weren't your friends at all. And if you're one of these people going around cancelling someone fabulous like my colleague and friend Lucy Jones, then you don't realise what you're giving up. Your echo chamber will become an ever more toxic bubble in which you're insulated from not just the fun of debate and maybe learning something and thinking, but you will ultimately be insulated from the truth itself, which is surely something we're all after. In the end, the truth will out. It always does. These supposedly lovely liberals, who are usually the ones doing the cancelling, are in fact deeply illiberal bullies. The cancellation of friends for not being on message for having the wrong views, the deplorables, as Hillary Clinton famously referred to Trump supporters, is deeply wrong and counterproductive. In the end, Hillary lost and you may lose too. Those cancelling ultimately risk cancellation themselves. So if you have lost friends in the last few years at work or within your social circle, count yourself lucky. With friends like those, who needs enemies?